SEC quarterback battles. Yeah, so I think the first thing that sticks out to me being a fan of this team is Alabama. Uh, Jalen Milrow had some experience last year, and uh, in comes redshirt freshman who sat out last year uh, as third string behind Bryson Milrow. Uh, Ty Simpson, who's a five-star. We actually have A-Day this week, so it'll be the first time uh, really to see both of these guys in action uh, from a fan standpoint. I'm excited for it, and uh, I think that's really the the main go-to quarterback battle leading college football today is what's Alabama going to do? What do you think, man? Well, obviously, you got to go with the experience. Uh, Jalen Milrow, um, he played in one game. Um, he was, you know, Bryce Young was injured. Uh, got to see him in action. A lot of Bama fans did not like uh, what they saw. And, um, you know, here's the thing about Jalen Milrow. Last year, uh, and he, the, last year he did not get a whole entire um, offseason practice with the ones. Okay, this year will be the first year that he's getting uh, 100% of the reps with the ones. Um, and uh, a lot of people, you know, during uh, spring practices have said that uh, Jalen Milrow has a cannon for an arm, which that's why Alabama recruited him. So we won't really know too much until uh, Alabama's A day. And even then, you won't know 100% how Milrow's looking. But um, on the other side, you got Ty Simpson. Um, he's highly recruited. Uh, you know, obviously he's Alabama. Uh, you know they're a power power team, blue blood. But uh, you know Ty Simpson, he could definitely challenge Jalen Milrow. We know Nick Saban is not afraid to put backup quarterbacks, uh, you know, in the game. And uh, Georgia fans, y'all know that really well. Uh, that Alabama Nick Saban is not scared to pull a starting quarterback. So it'll be interesting. I still think uh, you have to have Milrow start. Uh, just based off of experience, and um, you know he does have a cannon for an arm. He can run. He has legs, uh, so he is a speedster there. And he reminds me a little bit. Uh, he has, you know, he's bulky, so he kind of reminds me of a KJ Jefferson a little bit. Maybe not as powerful, but um, yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing uh, that quarterback battle uh, heat up. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, I listen to all the experts all the time, almost every single day. And, you know, one thing I've been hearing is that Jalen Morrow does seem like the guy for Alabama, and he should be the guy for Alabama. You look back <clears throat> at his stats last year, uh, 297 yards, five touchdowns, three picks with a QBR of 82. Uh, he did have to start. Remember when Bryce um, – I'm trying to remember what the injury was um, that Bryce Young had. Oh. But, I think it was a concussion protocol. I think so, too. I think he did take a hit to the head. Um, he played – he only played in five games last year. Did play in the Sugar Bowl uh, against Kansas State. He had one attempt for no yards, no sacks, though. Uh, he just tried to pass the attempt and hand, handed the ball off. But a game that stood out, uh, yes, it was close. It was 24-20. to 20. But he started against Texas A&M, and they ran the ball a lot in that game. But he was 12 of 19 with a 63 completion percentage for 111 yards and three touchdowns. Did have a pick, and as long as play was of 35, the only issue for me was uh, not necessarily the interception. I like the three touchdowns, but but he took four sacks in the game. And the offensive line we know was suspect uh, for Alabama last year. It's supposed to be much improved. Jalen Milrow is supposed to be much improved. I think if you go based off talent, I think you put Ty Simpson in there and give him a chance. This guy is electric, uh, knows what he wants to do with the football. He can throw darts downfield. He's very mobile. So is Jalen Milrow. But Ty Simpson's a five-star athlete out of high school. Um We'll see, man. I don't know. Uh, I think it's going to be Jalen Melrose to lose, but I think we'll know more come Saturday when A-Day uh, comes on. Yeah, for sure. And, um, you know, I don't want to keep on uh, harping on this, but, you know, uh, Jalen Milrow, uh, he's getting reps with the ones, like I said, uh, and, and we'll see how his progression is uh, leading up 
to I believe eight days this Saturday. So we'll see uh, how that goes. Let's um talk about Ole Miss. They have a three way, which I really think I really think is just a two way battle. But um uh, you know we'll say it's a three way for this show. Uh, Jackson Dart, Spencer Sanders, and Walker Howard. Jackson Dart is a veteran of Ole Miss. He played last year for Ole Miss. Um, Spencer Sanders comes from Oklahoma State. It seems like he's been at Oklahoma State for 100 years. Um, you know, and then Walker Howard, uh, he was a true freshman last year at LSU. So uh, he will be joining the Ole Miss crew. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say this. Uh, if Sp- I've heard, uh, I don't know how true this is. Comment section, y'all can let me know, but. Uh, Spencer Sanders is dealing with a little bit of injury problems there. Um, but really, I think it's just a Jackson Dart Spencer Sanders um, competition. Spencer Sanders uh, is definitely the better quarterback if you have two healthy quarterbacks uh, ready to go. I think Spencer Sanders is uh, by far the better quarterback. But uh, Jackson Dart does have experience with Ole Miss. So uh, we'll be looking forward to that. Um, I'm going to say the same exact thing that I said about Alabama. You got to give Jackson Dart the start. Uh, and if he messes up, then Spencer Sanders comes in and takes over. Uh, wh- what's your thoughts on this? Yeah. So, according to this, is from like a Microsoft website here. Um, I don't know what I'm reading, but uh, they predict actually, they predict Spencer Sanders for Ole Miss. Um, you mentioned four star prospect Walker Howard comes in from LSU. Uh, he attempted six passes last year and cleaned up and blowout games, which LSU had a few of those. Uh, and he looked pretty good. Um, <clears throat> a lot of people pred- predict Walker Howard as a day two draft pick. Uh, could he be better? Um, first off, I'll say this. Any quarterback out there for Ole Miss, we got to believe that Lane Kiffin um, is an offensive guru. He knows what he's doing. I think you got to trust him and what he can do with these quarterbacks. I, if you go off experience, Jackson Dart is the guy. Uh, I know Spencer Sanders has been around for a while and a little longer. Yes. But I mean, experience with the team. Jackson Dart was the guy last year. I don't see a reason to bench him. But um, when you look at, uh, I, I would say it comes down between him and Spencer Sanders. I really don't know too much about Walker Howard, if I'm being honest, other than he's from LSU. Uh, but Spencer Sanders um, didn't come in to be a backup. Um, and, you know, he did very, very well at Oklahoma State. He's got a strong arm. He's mobile, can get outside the pocket. Um, there's a lot of things he can do. So, honestly, I know it's a three-man race, but – I think ultimately what you'll see is it's either going to be Dart or Sanders. That's my opinion for Ole Miss. Yeah, I would totally agree with you. Um, you know, let's go to um, a familiar face in Georgia. Um, I'm yeah. going to be honest. I think that spring game pretty much told us who the starting quarterback was for the Georgia Bulldogs. Now, if you've been watching my channel, I've been telling y'all guys, Georgia does not really have a quarterback battle Carson Beck got this in the bag, but um, a lot of people didn't uh, believe that. A lot of people just a week ago, uh, they had some inside information with, um, you know, Brock Vandergriff had three touchdown passes and Carson Beck had three interceptions in one of their practices. And um, I don't know how they got that inside information uh, because, you know, that was a closed practice. um, And, you know, a lot of the media can't get into the practices. so. A lot of that was speculation that, um, and it could have been true, you know, uh, but, you know, Carson Beck, I've been saying for a long time, ever since pretty much the season's ended, that Carson Beck is your starter. And I understand that Carson Beck looked good in blowouts of games. And I know you're going to say, well, it was a blowout versus UAB. It was a blowout versus, you know, South Carolina. It was a blowout versus Vanderbilt. Yeah, but he also played in the national championship, okay? And I know you're going to say, yeah. well, TCU, TCU didn't deserve to be there. And, look, that's a whole different conversation for a whole d- different day because I can go on and on about how I do believe TCU deserved to be there, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about the quarterback battle, and honestly, my honest opinion, it was never really a quarterback battle. 
I think you had to um, have this as a quarterback battle so that Brock Vandergrift doesn't transfer right away. And um, I think you will see uh, Brock Vandergrift transfer um, here. Uh, I don't know in the in in, in the next few. Uh, obviously, you only got 15 days to do so. So here in the next uh, couple of days, you should hear Brock Vandergrift uh, transferring unless he thinks he does uh, deserve a shot. Uh, we'll see. Um, and somebody asked him about it, and he said he's going to take it day by day. So um, uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, wh what's your thoughts? Yeah, I think, you know, uh, the Georgia quarterback situation is a big deal this offseason. You're replacing a – I can't believe I'm fixing to say this, but I know it's true. You're replacing a legend in Stetson Bennett. Um, I laugh saying that, but it's true. I mean, back-to-back -back national championships, what are you going to do with that? Walk on quarterback. You have actual guys recruited. I know you guys have um, like Gunnar Stockton in waiting. Uh, maybe he's down the road in a few years. But for this year, uh, what I saw with Carson Beck um, was phenomenal. I mean, it looked like he knew how to run an offense. And that's something that we didn't hear Georgia fans say. Like, Georgia fans were not saying anything about Carson Beck being this good like what he was on Saturday. And I know it's just a spring game, but I really believe he's got to be the guy for you guys. I don't think there's any competition right now. I, I mean, um, there is, but there shouldn't be. Um, no disrespect and, to Vandergriff, but, I mean, I think Carson Beck looked calm in the pocket. Uh, he delivered the football when he needed to. He extended plays, and he delivered on the football field when it mattered most on Saturday. Right. And you know, um, I made a I made a video just a couple months ago, uh, before before all this was you know happening, and I said Carson Beck could be like a uh, Drake May, and he could be up for the Heisman. Uh, you talk about Stetson Bennett. Uh, Stetson Bennett was up for the Heisman, and uh, to me, I'm gonna say this: I think Stetson Bennett was a good quarterback for Georgia. I didn't believe in him in 2021, and I really didn't believe in him probably for the first half of the 2022 season, but he is a good quarterback. He will be drafted, um, you know, and I believe Carson Beck was a really good backup for him, and I believe Carson Beck will be the starter, and I do believe this. Carson Beck had has a better arm and a better, um, you know, I guess better accuracy, right? He has better accuracy. Yeah. Been Bennett. This guy, and I already said this in a previous video, but I'm going to say it again for people that wasn't listening. Um, Carson Beck can fit the ball into tight windows, and we saw that uh, in the spring game. I mean, he was making uh, plays, you know, that Brock Vandergriff wasn't making. Brock Vandergriff, whenever he, whenever he was, whenever he was, uh, you know, about the, whenever you know, down set hut and, uh, you know, as a quarterback, you're supposed to go through your progressions. Okay, this is who I want to throw it to. He's not open. Find the second wide receiver. Find the third wide receiver. Find a tight end. Um, you know, Brock Vandergriff, he looked at the first target, and if he wasn't open, he took off running with his legs. And that's Carson. Uh, that's something that Carson Beck uh, showed that he does have the ability to go through his progressions. He looked calm. He looked collected. And so i um, not going to really talk about this anymore because – uh, Carson Beck is your starter, guys. And I've been saying it way before the spring game. So, um, yeah, let's move on uh, to a uh, Georgia rival here, Florida. Oh, man. I, listen, Florida is a train wreck, aren't they? They uh, Florida's NIL offered uh, R R Jaden Rashada like $11 million, and they couldn't promise him that money. Now, uh, and then they had a uh, other quarterback that went to jail. We're not going to talk about that. Uh, we're all about spreading positivity on this channel, so we're not going to talk about that. But um, now they end up with uh, transfer Graham Mertz from Ohio State, and then they have Jack Miller. Give me your thoughts on this. I I don't know too much about Jack Miller. I remember Graham Mertz at Wisconsin. And he did all right. It wasn't too bad. Um not the best of quarterbacks. <laughs> I, I don't know what to say because Florida as a whole unit in that spring. Did you watch all of that spring game the other night? I'm going to be honest. I 
caught bits and pieces of the Florida spring game. I did not watch all of it. No. I had to go back and watch highlights. But I'll tell you what I saw. I saw a team that looked like they didn't know what to do on a football field. I, I saw a team that looked frightened and scared to be there. Like they didn't want to be there. I don't know, man. I don't expect Florida to be that good this year. Now, as far as the quarterback battle goes, I think it doesn't matter who they start. They're not going to finish that well. Um, I think that's true. I mean, I think maybe it's going to be Graham Mertz. Um, I didn't. But I, I, I just – Florida. <laughs> I, I mean, I got, a, I, I, got a serious, I got a serious question. I don't know how long Graham Mertz has. Uh, I, I'm assuming that he has a couple more years to play. Um, I think the quarterback for Florida will be Graham Mertz because, you know, Billy Napier talks really highly of him, saying that he could be the best quarterback uh, out there. Uh, from the transfer portal, which is ridiculous statement. That's a very ridiculous statement. That says Florida, at, Florida uh, Billy Napier actually said that he believes that they grabbed the best quarterback in the portal. And <laughs> hey, Billy Napier, you're wrong on that one. Um, you know the little bit I saw uh, from the spring game and uh, you know highlights and stuff. Graham Mertz is not a good quarterback, and they they do got one good receiver. Uh, part of their problem is they don't have anybody to throw it to, and that was their problem last year. Uh, can't remember uh, Rick in his name, Ricky something, Rick Ricky Pearsall. Uh, that's the only wide receiver that Florida has. Uh, who are who else are they going to throw it to? Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, Twisted Rooster, you know, thank you for uh, you know listening and and showing us some love. He says, why are y'all picking on those poor little gators? I mean, come on, man. Uh, if the shoe was on the other foot, they'll be picking on us too. So, Florida, man, I ain't got much really to say. Uh, Graham Mertz probably going to be starting quarterback because uh, Billy Napier thinks he's the best out of the transfer portal, and um, that's that. Look, it doesn't, matter. It, it doesn't matter who they start. They're not going bowling. You know well, what I'm saying? They're probably not. Yeah. I think if they do go bowling. If they do go bowling, it'll be a six and six year. Yeah. So, uh, anything else to say about this uh, horrible Florida team? No, and that's really all we got for the SEC quarterbacks. Are you ready to move on to the Big Ten? Oh, for sure. I'll let I'll let you take the lead. What you got? So.